One of the hardest parts about writing a book or screenplay is coming up with an effective title that encapsulates that story that you're trying to tell. If you don't come up with a great title, you miss out on the audience that you're trying to reach. But coming up with a good title can be frustrating. It's so hard to boil down your story and all the meaning within it into a, a single word or a few words. And if you're struggling with this, there are ways of doing it. And today I'm going to help you out. I'm going to tell you the most effective way to give your book a title as well as some alternative methods. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm a writer and welcome to my writing channel. Today I wanna to talk about titling your book or screenplay and this is super important, but in order for me to explain the most popular method of titling a story, I first have to talk about plot structure, particularly three act structure. If you're not familiar with three act structure, it's one of the most popular types of plot structure out there. It's what you see in a lot of books and a lot of movies. And the way it works is you have your first 25% and that's act one. And this is usually the part of the story where you have a main character who is struggling with something, they're living an unfulfilled life, they have problems that need fixing, and you're, you're kind of rooting for them to change at this point. Now, the part where they do start changing is that second act, and this is the middle 50% of the story, and then at the end you have the the 25% that makes up the third act. But for, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be talking about the first act and the second act, and particularly that 25% mark. Because at the 25% mark is usually where you have that main character in act one who has some problems that need fixing, and they undergo some sort of change or they take up some kind of task, and from then on, one of their character flaws is challenged. And this is usually what your book or your movie is about. It's about what is the challenge that the character is undergoing or what is defining their life and pushing them toward change. So that 25% mark is what you want to look at if you're trying to figure out the title for your book or your screenplay. Now let me give you some examples of some titles that are drawn from that 25% mark. The first one I want to talk about is The Born Identity and this is of course a story about a man who has amnesia. He spends that first act wandering around wondering who he is and he wants to know who he is. Then at the 25% mark he finds out who he is but he finds out he's not the person he wanted to be. He finds out he's this assassin type person who, you know, he's, he's committed some crimes, he's not happy with that, and he, he really just doesn't want to be that person. For the purpose of the title itself, if, you're just, if you were just scrolling through a, a bunch of different titles and you saw the born identity and you were someone who was, you know, struggling with your identity right now, maybe you're, you're in between jobs or you're, you're at a, a crisis in your life where you just don't understand who you are anymore, this might be the type of movie that attracts you. Now, oftentimes there will be movies that have a character's name as their title, or maybe a character's uh, job title or description or whatever it is. For instance, you might have something like John Wick or Spider-Man, and these are popular examples that also follow this 25% mark idea. I think with John Wick, you might at first say, well, wait, he's John Wick at the very beginning of the movie. That doesn't change at the 25% mark. But I would tell you that actually it does, because the John Wick in Act 1, if you've the movie, you know he's this wounded guy, he's mourning the death of his wife, he really has no direction in life, he doesn't know where he's going. Then it's at that 25% mark where he digs up his, his old weapons and we, we find out who John Wick really is. Because if you watch that movie, you notice that a lot of the villains in the movie, they, they speak John Wick's name with this reverence, like it's, it's John Wick, like in this hushed tone, they're always speaking it, like, like he's Voldemort or something. And I, I think it's interesting that there is a change in, in that point where he goes from being John Wick, the, the civilian, the, the, the guy who's you know just down on his luck because his wife is dead, to becoming John Wick, the assassin who he was in the past. And the story is really about, can he still be John Wick? Can he still be the John Wick who has to go up against the Russian mob, who has to face assassins, who has to deal with this world where he's always one bullet away from dying? Now, in the case of Spider-Man, you have Peter Parker in Act 1. He's this awkward, nerdy guy. All of a sudden, at the 20th, 25% mark, he gets bitten by a spider, he gets these superpowers, and he gets on his way to becoming Spider-Man and having to become a stronger person who deals with things like responsibility. Sometimes at the 25% mark, you might have characters who enter a new world or enter an event at that 25% mark. Jurassic Park is an example of this. Same with the Hunger Games. Although Katniss doesn't 
enter the official Hunger Games, I think until like about the midpoint. Uh, at that 25% mark is where she makes that jump. She leaves her district. She starts, you know, going into uh, the phases of preparing for the Hunger Games, things like that. Another example is the movie Alien. And Alien, of course, is about a group of space truckers in Act 1 whose biggest concerns are getting their pay, things like that, and they're headed home until they get a distress signal. They go and follow that distress signal, and once they reach this certain planet, what happens is one of the crew members gets attacked by this hatchling alien, and from that point on, the story is about the alien and how the crew responds to it. Now, I think with the title Alien, you might say, well, that's kind of a generic title. It's just one word. It's just, it, it's literally something you would just find in the dictionary. What does that really say? But however, I would argue that that's a great title because th the title Alien is simple and it also has this element of mystery to it. It's just it's just alien. There's no there's no other explanation, which which kind of draws you in. You you get the sense, okay, it's about a sci-fi type story, alien. Okay, but but what kind of alien? And and that's really what the story is about because the alien is constantly changing shapes and you know revealing itself in terms of its abilities and how lethal it is. And that's really the draw of the story. With a title like that, it's it's definitely effective. And I think a lot of horror movies will oftentimes use a short title that really doesn't give much away, like, like Halloween, like The Thing, stuff like that. Now using the 25% mark to find your title is a great way of doing it. It's probably the best way, and it, it's worked for a lot of movies and a lot of books, but Oftentimes, when you write a story, your 25% mark, it might not have anything that can really generate a title. So what do you do there? Well, there are some other ways of doing it. I think there's a lot of movies that often use a location as their title. For instance, Casablanca or Titanic. Also, you might have stories that use a symbol as their title. Stories like The Scarlet Letter, The Catcher in the Rye, The Dark Knight. These are all examples of stories that, you know, not necessarily what happens at the 25% mark is what it's about, but something at the very beginning or at the very end of the story is what defines it. And if you're still stuck trying to come up with a title, look at things like your main character's name, something like Rocky, or even the villain's name, something like Red Dragon or Hannibal or Goldfinger. There's so many possibilities. Honestly, it really comes down to finding the right tone that sends the message to your intended audience. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what is your favorite book or movie and how does it get its title? Does it pick it from the beginning of the story, the end of the story, some symbolism, some character, or is it that 25% mark? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me and remember to keep on writing.